Hi there, Scott Wyatt, Bush Protective USA. These are the top five questions that are asked about our ballistic helmets. They are, but it's a trick question because there is no 3A certification. In fact, the original certification comes back from a test that was created in 1975 and it was revised in 1981. That is technically the last direction that the NIJ gave on helmets. When you get into the actual certification, what it really is, is it's a self-administered test that helmet manufacturers have been putting on helmets for years, which essentially what it is, uh, is a penetration test. So everybody today calls their helmets a 3A, and all they do is they shoot it with a 9 mil, they shoot it with a 44 mag at lower velocities. As long as that round stops, meaning that it, there's no penetration, then they call it a NIJ 3A helmet. However, our helmets are now certified to the new DEA FBI ballistic helmet testing protocol from 2019, as well as the VPAM level three certification, which is a certification from, uh, from Europe. Yeah, great question. So whereas the NIJ test just strictly tests for penetration, uh, the VPAM standard, um, which is used in Europe for everything from helmets to plates and soft armor, uh, the VPAM level three also tests um, additional things such as they uh, temperature controlled, so they heat up the helmets, they test it under cold properties, they also test uh, the bolts and the adjacent hardware, and they also do random testing. Um, the most important thing about the VPAM standard is they test trauma and energy transfer into the head using joules. Um, whereas in the US we use back face deformation measuring in clay, they measure joules and no shot can transmit more than 25 joules of energy into the head. So the FBI DEA protocol took into account and really built off the VPAM standard, but specifically tried to cater it towards law enforcement application in the United States. So what the FBI and the DEA did uh, at their lab in Quantico was they really tried to duplicate extreme environmental situations that their special agents might be subjected to in the field, and they wanna make sure that their equipment is going to satisfy those demands. So for example, um, the VPAM standard um, has, a, has a, a pretty high temperature test. Um, they don't really do extreme cold, whereas we wanna make sure that uh, a special agent for the FBI that's operating in Anchorage, Alaska, um, knows that their equipment's gonna survive in, in, during that cold temperature. Um, so that's probably the biggest difference is really um, also testing the uh, not just the bolts, they also test a near edge bolt. They do angled shots, and they also have included, probably most importantly, a blunt trauma uh, test to make sure that um, it's really meant to simulate uh, an officer fast roping from a helicopter, losing their grip, falling 25 feet, and hitting their head on a, on a, on a standard object or a stationary object, and making sure that that officer survives that impact and stays in the fight. So our helmets are based off the ACH shape. Um, we use an extra large ACH shell, and then we use our um, adjustable proprietary wheel harness system, and we have uh, cam straps to be able to have four-point adjustment. So whereas most helmet manufacturers are making four helmet sizes, that's because of the military, and they're trying to translate this into law enforcement, um, we found that we could offer, number one, an easier sizing system that works for everybody, you don't have to have different sizes, especially these days. Some agencies will keep a helmet on a particular vehicle in a squad, uh, maybe in a, in, a, in a fire engine. Oftentimes there'll be one helmet for each seat. So we really wanted to have a one size fits all solution. Um, in the six years that I've been working with Bush Protective, uh, I've only had one individual um, that couldn't be sized with our helmet. That's a great question. I would say domestically in the US, um, and really internationally. Any law enforcement application, this is, is, is a great solution for you. Who it's not good for is somebody who's gonna have that helmet on for 12, 16 hours. To be able to achieve the ballistic performance that we do, um, this is a aramid helmet, maybe half a pound heavier than some of the lighter weight ones that are out there in the field. Those are great frag helmets, those are great bump helmets but those are not designed for CQB operations. So if you're gonna be wearing your helmet in the field for six, eight, 12 hours, I would ideally say that you wanna go with a very lightweight polyethylene helmet that's gonna offer great frag protection and bump protection, but that extra 
weight that you're going to have to be carrying is going to really impact you and, and it's, going to, it's going to tire you out. So if you're ideally wearing your helmet for an entry, half an hour, an hour, two hours, um, the little extra bit of weight that you're going to have is really going to be perfect. We customize the helmets for each individual officer for each individual mission. So for patrol, you might want full cut helmets. Um, some of the federal agencies really like mid-cut is in between and a lot of the SWAT teams and the higher speed operators that need to be more mobile within a, a, a closer envir close environment, they want to go high cut and they want to get their comms on there. So really most law enforcement applications, um, you're going to be good to go. Again, my name is Scott Wyatt with Bush Protective. You can visit us at bushprousa.com. If you have any questions, you can also reach out to us at inquiries at bushprousa.com. That's B-U-S-C-H. Thanks very much.